managing a large scale software catalog without having automation or dynamic configuration in place can be very challenging. And that's a pitfall for many teams trying to bring in a catalog, but the data in it is not up to date. This is why dynamic configurations are really important. And in this video, we are going to list the options for dynamic configuration in Backstage so you will be able to manage your catalog in large scale. Let's go. What do we want to achieve by having dynamic configuration? So the challenge of the problem we are trying to solve is that, first of all, making sure that our data in the catalog is up to date. Second thing is that we don't want users to be manually involved in such a process. We want users to code. We don't want to trust them in order to update the catalog because that will never happen. The third thing is we want to make sure that our catalog and our code base actually synced all the time. It's like when we are using Argo CD or any GitOps methodology to make sure our infrastructure and code are synced if we want our software catalog and the code to be synced. So how do we do that? In order to understand the solutions, we need to always think as Git as our main source of truth, like we are doing in other projects and products. This is important because Git is going to be a crucial role and a key component in the solution we are going to offer. Why is that? Because every code change actually flows through Git. Git is like a database and Backstage or any other component can fetch the information from Git as to be its own database. And that's critical because we do have a database in Backstage, but we want to separate them and we want to have one source of truth and the other database to be a replica of it. So in our solution, we are going to use Git to be the main source of truth and Backstage Software Catalog database to be something that is duplicate or a copy. But if something change in Backstage, it will be always overridden by our Git repo source of truth. Backstage got a wide variety of data sources can be used in order to fetch the catalog information. One of the popular one is S3. If your organization relies heavily on S3 and to actually fetch and query and transform the data from your data source to there will be the easiest for you, that can be a good solution. In this video, we are going to focus mainly on Git repositories. Our first option would be a location-based catalog. A location is a resource in Backstage that is a reference to a different component in Backstage. And what it means is that we can create a resource called location and point into a different resource, which can be a software catalog or component to be added to our catalog. And Backstage will automatically go to the location and try to fetch it into the catalog. And what is nice about it is that one location resource can hold up multiple location as a list in the resource itself. And Backstage will automatically go through all of them and fetch the information. We can see that very clearly in the demo environment of Backstage, which they have location files called, for example, all components, and then a reference to actually all the components in the same repo and even on different repos. That will allow us to create a dynamic structure that have some static files, but it will reference dynamically to information being up to date in each one of the repos or the location that we have in our organization. So we do need to manage only the last files. User will have to do it, but the location will automatically fetch the right information to Backstage. And that solves that problem. On the other side, user will still have to manage the resource software component file at the end. So for example, if you want to update one link in the software catalog, someone will need to manage it as the resource itself and commit it to the target repo. So it solves only part of the problem. It's not a fully dynamic configuration, but 
Location based methodology is nice, but it still not solves the problem because you do need to manage all the locations. So maybe we can think about different approach. And one of the approach is a Git methodology based, which means every time a PR is approved and merged, the catalog will be up to date by a push in the CI process that will push and query the new information into the catalog and that will make sure that in any merge action, our catalog is actually up to date. So we are using the native development lifecycle and the Git lifecycle in order to make sure that our catalog is up to date. Another approach is the pull approach, which is a more cron-based approach. And using the cron-based approach, it means that we have a cron task and a cron job that will crawl against all of our repository, organization, whatever we define, and will make sure that it sync the catalog information and our Git information. The Git will be the source of proof and the cron will push the information using a pull methodology of the cron-based information. So once every five, 10, 15 minutes, one hour, really depends on the organization pace of development, it will query the information from all of your repositories and update the software catalog. How do we make users actually update their own information? So there are many ways to do that from actually shaming them and saying, oh, you haven't updated the file, which personally I don't like this method, to integrating automation into the CI CD process that, for example, block them to merge if they haven't updated the catalog information and they change something critical. It can be because many lines of code change or some any other change that you want to be enforced. Maybe you know there is important file that if it change, you may need to change your catalog. And this is great because it's allow users to update the catalog while they are putting and implementing their own software delivery processes. And if you are integrated in their processes, it means that you can solve both ways. First of all, to have dynamic configuration on one side, and then users will update their own repos and catalog on the other side, and that will create a fully dynamic solution. By now, you should ask yourself, are you the only one experiencing or trying to solve this such a problem? And the answer is no. Like, obviously, someone before you try and actually solve this problem. So in Backstage, we got a plugin called Git Entity Discovery. And by using a very simple configuration, this process can crawl through your organization in GitHub by your configuration, so you can define which directory you wanted to crawl, which files you wanted it to bring in, and you have like a really vast and flexible configuration. And it will automatically fetch all the information through all of your organization. So you don't need to push everything. You don't need to pull like using your own methodology or write your own cron job. You don't need to manage the location files and the Git entity discovery will do that for you using this very simple configuration. I really think that this can be a good method, but on the other side, it means that your Git repository should be very structured. So for example, you should have a catalog directory in each one of the repos. And if you cannot manage it for a long time, that can be a very problematic uh, solution for you. So you do need to ask yourself like, what is already defined in our repos and how can we tie it in into this crawler? And I think that's a great solution. You can activate by the configuration that we just show you. And that's a really good and dynamic configuration option if you're using GitHub. Using one of the four options available for you to manage the catalog using Git will help you to create a synchronization between your Git repo as the source of proof and Backstage as the software catalog that it's duplicating information from your Git repo. 
by using one of the methodology to make users actually update their own software catalog component will allow you to make sure that your catalog is always up to date. Thank you for watching this video. And if you like, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.